how banks create money. This is the second in a three-part series on the Fed and monetary policy. Today we're going to discuss how banks add money to the money supply using fractional reserves. When money is deposited into a bank, the bank must keep a percentage of the deposit as what's known as reserves. The percentage they must keep is known as the reserve requirement. For instance, if the bank has $10 million in total deposits and the reserve requirement is 10%, the bank must keep $1 million in reserves. If the bank has $10 million in total deposits and the reserve requirement is 12%, the bank must keep $1.2 million in reserves, and so on. Because the banks are only required to keep and hold a fraction of the money that is deposited, the remaining amount, known as excess reserves, can be invested and loaned out. In other words, if you deposit $100 into your savings account and the fractional reserve requirement is 10%, the bank has to hold $10 of that and they can loan out the other 90. And that's called a fractional reserve because they have to hold a fraction of the amount of the money the people deposit and they can loan the rest out. What you may not realize is when the bank loans part of your deposit out, they are actually adding to the money supply. Let's break down how that works. Let's set the reserve requirement at 10%. Let's say someone deposits $10,000 into the bank. The bank must hold $1,000 of that in reserves. However, they can loan out $9,000 of that. Let's say they loan out $9,000 to another customer so they can buy a used car. The original customer's $10,000 is still there at the bank. He can go take his $10,000 out anytime he wants. However, the bank loaned out $9,000 of that to another customer. As you can see, that loan actually added another $9,000 into the money supply. So the guy who takes the loan out to buy the used car, he, let's say he goes and buys his car, and he gives the person selling the car his $9,000, and that person goes and deposits the $9,000 into his bank. That bank now holds $900 of that $9,000 in reserves, but it can loan out $8,100 of that. As you can see, another $8,100 is added to the money supply. The $9,000 is still there in the bank account. He can go take it out anytime he wants. The other customer's $10,000 is still there in his account. He could take that out anytime he wants. But as you can see, there's more money created. So the person borrows the $8,100 and spends it on something. And the person who sold whatever to him deposits the $8,100 into his bank. That bank keeps $810 in reserves and loads out another $7,290. That's another $7,290 added to the money supply. All the bank accounts are still there. They can go get them anytime they want. The banks are counting on the fact that not every single customer is going to come take their money out of the bank at the same time. They're assuming that as long as they have some money there, that only a small percentage of people will actually want their money out of the bank, and therefore they can keep loaning money back out with the idea that not too many people will, make, will withdraw their money all at once. This process can keep continuing indefinitely with the potential of adding 10 times the original deposit into the money supply. Now let's look at that same example if the reserve requirement was 15%. The original person deposits $10,000 into the account. However, the bank must hold $1,500 in reserves. This leaves them only $8,500 to loan out. Someone borrows that $8,500 and spends it on something, and the recipient deposits the $8,500 into the bank. The bank must hold $1,275, leaving only $7,225 to loan out. The, uh, the borrower spends that, and the recipient bar uh, deposits $7,225 in the bank. The bank must hold $1,083.75, leaving only $61.41 and a quarter to loan out. As you can see, raising the reserve requirements by just 5% significantly lowers how much money can be created through the deposits. If the reserve requirement is 10%, a $10,000 deposit has the potential of creating $100,000 or 10 times the amount of the original deposit. 
If the reserve requirement is 15%, a $10,000 deposit has the potential of creating only $67,700 or 6.7 times the original deposit. As you can see, just raising the reserve requirement from 10% to 15% reduces the amount of potential money being created by a third. The amount of potential increase to the money supply is dependent on the deposit multiplier. The deposit multiplier is the reciprocal of the reserve requirement percentage. If the reserve requirement is 10%, then the deposit multiplier is 1 over 10% or 10. In other words, you multiply the original deposit by 10 to see what the potential increase to the money supply will be. As you can see, changing the reserve rate raises or lowers the nation's money supply. Regulating the nation's money supply is one part of monetary policy, which is the subject of the next video. There, now you've seen how banks create money and add to the money supply. You've also seen how a very small change in the fractional reserve requirements can have a very large potential change in the amount of currency in circulation. So there you have it. In the next video, we'll look at how the Fed uses reserve rates and other tools to control the nation's money supply to try and influence the economy. See you then.